A few weeks ago, Google released Gemini 2.5 Flash Image, which came with a nickname, Banana Nano. And in short, it's a model that allows you to generate images. But the thing that makes it really interesting for developers is that they also added this SDK. So you can also generate these images programmatically using Python. And the benefit of that is that you can also use it from a Marimo notebook, which means that you can combine all of your Python code with widgets and whatever tool you like. So in this video, I would like to show you this paint widget that I made that allows you to steer the generation of the image together with Python code. And it also lets you build a proper pipeline all from a single notebook. All right, so this is the notebook that I want to talk about. I'm going to leave all the details for later in the video. I'm just going to give you the demo right away. So this is a cute picture of a puppy. I found it on Unsplash. And what I can go ahead and do now is I can give it a little bit of a angry stare, so to say. And another thing I might also be able to do is maybe doodle a little bit of a tie here. My drawing is not perfect, but these are two, I suppose, annotations. So let's make that tie complete. So this image, the one that has the extra annotations attached, that is now something I can send to the Google API. But before doing that, I can also add a prompt. So let's just have a look at that. Here's the prompt. Take this image and make it look cartoonish. The dog also needs to wear a tie. Notice the annotations and keep them into account to change the image. This is the prompt. And when I now hit this generate image button, you can see something run down below and boom, there is the new image. We now have a frowny faced dog wearing a tie. It looks a bit cartoonish, but that's also the point. But the thing that's really cool now is that, sure, I could also have done this with a Python script. Like, what's so useful about doing this in a notebook? The thing that makes it really cool is that you can now also move on to a next step. Because in this case, I might want to fetch the dog separated from the background. And for that, I can use a background removal model. You can find these on Hugging Face. In this case, I'm just using a model that I found on Replicate. And when I now hit this button over here, I'm going to effectively get the dog out with the background removed. And if I were to click and drag, I can move this into whatever app. You could make YouTube thumbnails this way. But the thing that I love about this setup is that I'm A, super flexible. If I need to make tweaks, I can always do that with Python. But B, I can also just wire tools together and also generate a quick UI for it. It's really cool to have a widget that allows me to draw and maybe steer the Google algorithm. But usually when you're making an image, there's also a step after that you want to do, or maybe a step after that. And the Mario notebook environment just really lends itself nicely to make these kinds of bespoke experiences all while it just feels like you're doing a rapid prototype. So that's amazing. I can totally see this pipeline being very useful to make YouTube thumbnails, but there is a thing to keep in the back of your mind. Sometimes it's easier to draw something than it is to describe something, but the reverse is also true. And I've got a nice example of that here. So notice how I added a smiley face over here and sunglasses with these cute little eyebrows. When I look at this, it is clear that I want to add sunglasses and I want the dog to be very happy. But if I then tell the LLM to keep the annotations in mind and to make the dog look cartoonish, then notice how the annotations are just literally stuck there. And sure, it drew the sunglasses in the right shape, but I wanted the dog to look super happy. I didn't necessarily want it to have the thick marker lines intact. So you are going to have to play around a little bit with what are you going to draw and what are you going to manually prompt. If you want to play around with this notebook, there's a link in the show notes, but you might also be interested in understanding how the notebook is built, because there's a thing to pay attention to on this front. Let's say, for example, that I've got my prompt input over here. This is a Marimo text area. Then one thing I could do is I could maybe uh, type some more over here. And there's a risk that every time that I type there, that then cells that depend on it automatically update. And given that generating the image using the Google API is a somewhat expensive operation, you do want to limit that. That is why I'm using run buttons. And that's a feature that does deserve a little bit of an explainer. So from the Marimo UI submodule, there is a run button that we can go ahead and declare. Let's call that demo run button. Next up, I can call mo.stop here, which allows me to set a stop criterion for that cell. Demo run button value, and I have to put not in front of that. And now, if I were to do some extra typing here, more and more typing, then you're going to see that the cell doesn't update yet. It will only run if I hit this click to run button. And this is just a very nice safety mechanism to make sure that code doesn't run needlessly. And note that the same thing also holds for the drawing widget. It's a great widget, but you don't want to trigger a big compute every single time that you draw a line. You typically want to batch the lines and the prompts together. And only when you think everything is just right, that's when you want to go ahead and hit run. This is a great feature in general, by the way, but it specifically makes a lot of sense when you're dealing with these image models, again, because they do tend to require a lot of compute. And depending on your luck, it might actually take over 30 seconds before you get an image back. So being able to declare when things have to run is great. 
If you want to learn more, check the links in the show notes. I added the link to the notebook, but I also added a link to the drawing widget library that you can find on GitHub if you want to know more details about that. Thanks for listening, and if you want to see more like this, like and subscribe.